How's it going, everybody? It's Yeong here with a Metal Gear Solid 5 discussion. So it's been over a year since Phantom Pain launched, and fans still remain polarized on the matter of Venom Snake's true identity. Some people really liked the idea that Venom Snake was meant to be a representation of the player, as well as a means for Kojima to pass on the title of Big Boss to his fans, while others utterly detested the game's final plot twist, much preferring to have played as the real Big Boss from beginning to end and experience his story rather than some random medics. And then there are those like myself who are somewhere in between, who didn't absolutely hate the story and appreciated certain elements of what Kojima tried to accomplish with Phantom Pain, using the video game medium to its full extent, but also felt like it was lacking in execution. So something that I've been asking myself lately is, what Kojima could have done better to deliver the Venom Snake plot twist in a more appealing manner? Now, I could just take the easy route and simply say that Kojima should have scrapped Venom Snake altogether and focused on Big Boss, but the fact of the matter is that the Venom Snake plot twist was conceived pretty early on in MGS5's development process, and it's just one of those things that was inevitable. So instead of contemplating an MGS5 with Big Boss as the protagonist, which has infinite possibilities for fan fiction, I wanted to discuss ways that Kojima could have made the current MGS5 setup better. Let's begin by revisiting an older Metal Gear title that also employed a protagonist switcheroo not too dissimilar from Phantom Pains. I'm talking of course about Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Leading up to the game's launch, all Kojima showed of the game was either footage of MGS2's prologue tanker chapter starring Solid Snake or modified footage of the planned chapter in which Raiden's character model was swapped for Solid Snake's in order to hide MGS2's real protagonist. Raiden's existence was a well-kept secret, and people would only learn about him for the first time when the game finally launched. This may sound all too familiar to those who have been following Metal Gear Solid 5 from the beginning. Like with MGS2, footage of MGS5 often featured modifications or model swaps to avoid certain spoilers. Furthermore, all marketing materials advertise Phantom Pain as one thing, the revenge story of the veteran hero Big Boss and his downfall to villainy. But the final product was not exactly that, very akin to how MGS2 was advertised. A sequel to Solid Snake's story from MGS1 when it actually turned out to be Raiden's story. Also, much like MGS2, MGS5 has a prologue chapter similar to the Tanker chapter, which we now know as Ground Zeroes, in which you actually get to play as the veteran hero you know and love. But once you dive into the main game, Phantom Pain, the equivalent to MGS2's planned chapter, the game pulls a polarizing protagonist switcheroo. So my point is, there are clearly many parallels in the way MGS2 and MGS5 were both advertised and executed. But it is my belief that Metal Gear Solid 2 did a far better job in justifying and executing the protagonist switcheroo than MGS5 did, despite the parallels that the two games share in that respect. If you think about it, they're quite opposite of each other. The key difference lies in the timing of the protagonist switch revelation, whereas Metal Gear Solid 2 made it very clear from the get-go who the player was playing as, even if it wasn't what they were necessarily expecting, Metal Gear Solid 5 left the protagonist switch revelation to the very end of the game. There are two drastically different approaches that offer two drastically different effects, whereas MGS2 gives players a chance to become acclimated with their new role and circumstances circumstances throughout the rest of the game's main campaign, MGS5 has players completing the main campaign first before pulling the rug from underneath them and getting the last laugh. The latter's approach simply didn't leave enough room for players to deal with the fact that their existence within this game world had been a lie all along. The ruse ended up being the game's ending rather than being an element that shaped the rest of the experience, leaving little room for any kind of catharsis and thereby contributing to the fans' negative reception. It is my belief that if MGS5 had employed a narrative structure more akin to MGS2's, the Venom Snake plot twist would have worked much better and it would have been much better received. Imagine this. You wake up in the hospital as Venom Snake and go through the rehabilitation with Evangelist Constantino. You customize your character, Ahab, and once shit hits the fan, you finally meet Big Boss himself, who's disguised as the enigmatic Ishmael. So far, so familiar, right? 
You go through the whole hospital intro mission, but instead of having Ishmael disappear on you at the last minute, he tags along with you. You don't know who he is or why he's helping you. All you know is that he saved your life and seems like a capable man. Ishmael eventually unwraps his bandages to reveal that he has the face of the character you customized, whereas you have Big Boss's face. Thus, Chapter 1 begins. Throughout the entirety of Chapter 1, you play as Ahab, Big Boss's body double, with Ishmael, the real Big Boss, at your side acting as a sort of guardian angel. Maybe he doesn't go into missions with you per se, but he remains in Mother Base at least most of the time offering his services as Ishmael. And he's just there, constantly watching, providing ample opportunity to develop both Venom's story and big bosses through cutscenes and interactions. So chapter one treads along and eventually reaches its inevitable conclusion as Skullface's evil plot is thwarted. It's somewhere around this junction in the game that some kind of pivotal event triggers Venom Snake's memories and he finally remembers his true identity. By the end of chapter one, Venom Snake and in turn the player understands who he is and what role he's to play in the years to come to aid the real Big Boss in his future endeavors. As Big Boss realizes that Venom Snake finally remembers, he delivers his Man Who Sold the World speech not via cassette tape, but face to face, giving this moment a personal touch. I cheated death thanks to you. And thanks to you, I've left my mark. You have too. You've written your own history. You're your own man. I'm Big Boss. And you are too. No, he's the two of us together. Where we are today, we built it. This story, this legend, it's ours. We can change the world and with it the future. I am you and you are me. Carry that with you wherever you go. Thank you, my friend. From here on out, you're a big boss. On a meta level, this face-to-face -face encounter between Big Boss and Venom could serve as Kojima's way of directly communicating with his audience and passing down that Big Boss baton to us personally. Within the game itself, it serves as a pivotal moment for Venom Snake to recall his new purpose, to become Big Boss's phantom, the other side of the Big Boss coin. And overall, the big takeaway from this narrative structure is that by the end of Chapter 1, the game gets all of its ruses out of the way. By the end of Chapter 1, Kojima has delivered the message to us fans, and Big Boss has delivered his to Venom. With all that out of the way, Chapter 2 can finally begin. At this point, only you, Venom Snake, and Big Boss know about the Phantom Big Boss ruse. And now that the player knows exactly who they are, Chapter 2 story missions could act not only as the missing link between Ground Zeroes and Metal Gear 1, but also as a means to further develop Venom Snake and to give players the opportunity to become acclimated with their new set of circumstances. And perhaps throughout Chapter 2, the real Big Boss may still linger around Diamond Dogs as Ishmael, or he might be out and about doing his own things and setting his own plans in motion in preparation for what's to come, but he's still a pivotal part of the chapter and makes appearances throughout. This will allow Chapter 2 to fill in some of the gaps of the Metal Gear lore, like Big Boss's rescue of Grey Fox or Saladin's encounter with Sniper Wolf. Even if players don't get to directly control the real Big Boss, there would still be opportunities for us to look into a story from a third-person outsider's perspective from Venom's point of view, similarly to how Solid Snake received his fair share of developments and MGS2 as players looked from the outside in from Raiden's perspective. Or hell, maybe Chapter 2 could feature just a handful of missions that do allow you to play as the real big boss and see things from his perspective. After all, in this hypothetical scenario, the game has already established at the end of Chapter 1 that you're just as much big boss as he is, so it would still fit thematically. You're both big bosses, you get to play as either one. Regardless of the approach, the point is that Big Boss remains an integral part of Chapter 2's narrative, even if not the main focus. It's only once players finish Chapter 2's main story missions that Big Boss finally leaves Diamond Dogs to Venom, while he sets out to build his own nation for soldiers, Zanzibar Land, leaving it up to us to create Outer Heaven and to fill the shoes of the Big Boss Phantom while the real Big Boss makes his own preparations in the shadows. This is where the game reaches its conclusion. Maybe the game ends as we're given a glimpse of an Outer Heaven that is still under construction somewhere on the southernmost tip of Africa. Or if the developers decided to be more ambitious, maybe Venom and crew 
get to move into Outer Heaven and make this their new base of operations. But regardless, Phantom Pain's final destination is Outer Heaven, and you, Venom himself, can feel the satisfaction of knowing that you were an instrumental link to the events of Metal Gear 1. And by this point, Ocelot, who sort of self-hypnotized himself, remembers everything. He has that conversation at the end of Chapter 2 with Kaz Miller, and everything's set for future titles. Through this narrative structure, you wouldn't have your role as Big Boss's Phantom suddenly dropped on you like a bomb towards the end of the game, long after Big Boss has fled the scene, like in the current version of Phantom Pain. There would be a necessary build-up towards the revelation at the end of Chapter 1, and the necessary developments to flesh out the game's big twist in Chapter 2. Now, in order for this Chapter 2 to work, there would have to be another plot beyond Skullface to allow a proper build-up and an epic final confrontation. Perhaps this is a good opportunity to get Zero and the Patriots involved somehow, have them make actual physical appearances, and just develop that whole aspect. But what truly matters is that a link to Metal Gear 1's Outer Heaven, as well as all the other games that take place later in the timeline, is clearly established, thus having the saga come full circle. This, in my opinion, would have been the perfect way to wrap up the series. A nice balance of Kojima's ideas, while still adhering to what fans of Metal Gear would want from the narrative. Chapter 1 gets all the ruses out of the way, and Chapter 2 deals with allowing players to become acclimated with their new identity, while fleshing out both Venom Snake as a character and the Metal Gear lore as a whole. And throughout the two chapters, up until the very end of the game, Big Boss is a constant presence, with just enough focus placed on him to further develop his character and keep fans who have been itching to know more about him satisfied without distracting from the central role that Venom Snake was meant to play in Phantom Pain since early in the game's development. Now, obviously with this plot structure that I have in mind, a lot of the specific story elements would have to be changed from the current version of the game, but you get the idea. What I'm essentially proposing is an infusion of the narrative structure in MGS2. I truly believe the biggest problem with MGS5's protagonist switch is that it was literally the last thing that players get to experience before the game ends, leaving no room for the game to shape the experience around this pivotal plot twist and no room for players to settle into their new shoes. The opposite is the case in MGS2, in which the protagonist switch happens very early on, with the rest of the game shaping itself around this character Raiden. Regardless of whether you like or hate Raiden from the get-go, you at least get to see his story told with no BS attached, and by the end of the game you may discover that there is more to him than you had originally anticipated, and that Kojima maybe chose Raiden as the main character for very specific, thematic reasons. This is the approach that I wish MGS5 would have taken. Reveal the protagonist switch early enough so that the rest of the game can be shaped around it. Kojima would have still wanted players to believe they are Big Boss for a good amount of time, so I don't think MGS5's protagonist switch should be revealed as early as MGS2 did, which is why my proposal is that the revelation should have happened by the end of Chapter 1, halfway through the game. The big thing that Phantom Pain lacked on a narrative level was balance. Many of the story developments happen in Chapter 1, with Chapter 2 sorely lacking in that department. Far too much build-up was placed in Chapter 1, with far too little being placed on Chapter 2, which featured a finale that popped out of nowhere and forces players to replay the prologue on Rails Hospital mission over again in order to unlock what is essentially one final cutscene. Too much focus was placed on the Venom Snake plot twist, and too little on veteran characters like the real Big Boss and the development of the saga as a whole. With the narrative structure that I'm proposing, I think a more satisfying balance could have been struck, in which Kojima can experiment with his ideas while still satisfying fans' cravings as well. So there you have it folks, how I believe the Venom Snake protagonist switch could have been better handled. Keep in mind that this video reflects my own personal thoughts and opinions. You may agree or disagree, but I at least hope you enjoyed this perspective. And if you have your own thoughts and opinions to share on the matter, be sure to let us know in the comments below. And to be further updated on Metal Gear news and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah! I'll see you guys next time! Yong out!